Morning world. Welcome to Sunday the 9th of August or Emma's birthday. So although it's Emma's birthday today, and by the way, Millie's birthday, my granddaughter's birthday as well, uh, the party was had yesterday. And judging by the detritus that is still laying around, well, I know, we had a pretty good time. So um, there was bouncy councils or, uh, um, for the kids. Uh, we basically let them have the field at the back there to mess about in, plus kind of all the golf course they could roam around on. They didn't go very far. But there was music and there was laughter and there was drinking and there was um, general silliness, I think, most of the time. So um, I, I don't drink, or in extreme moderation. So I'm one of the few people this morning that is not suffering from a headache. So as far as I'm aware, Emma's kind of okay. Mikey... I understand, not so good this morning, but you know what, you, re you reap what you sow. So anyway, the Bouncy Council folks are coming back to pick up their equipment, which is out there, have they taken the cable in? Out there and ready to go. Um, we haven't folded it up, what have they done with the cable? Oh, it's there, that's fine. Okay, uh, the Tyndale Archers are due here in the next half an hour or so. Um, this isn't gonna get in their way. So they're gonna be out chucking their arrows down across the golf course for the morning. Um, I've got a few little bits and bobs of jobs to do around here, and, and it's Sunday. So as tradition dictates, I will be off to visit my parents. Biscuit, come on, come on. I don't think the GoPro is going to pick him up very well, but the caves are all down on the left-hand side there. They've now actually got all three paddocks down there to graze, which they'll have for the rest of the day. And once the archers have finished out on the golf course, um, I'll open the gates and let you lay the cattle to go back out there. And I'll probably also give them access to the bottom right-hand field. And I'm going to basically ranch um, that area. So I could strip graze it. But I think what we'll do, we'll ranch it. Um, the cattle will then have 20 acres to roam over um, with access to water, access to shelter. And I think probably we're going to be mowing. I can't make up my mind whether to mow that bottom left-hand piece or, or keep that back to maybe strip graze later on because it, <laughs> although it's damp, it's been very dry. I mean, if you look at my garden, we've got dirty, great big cracks. I know this is all made up ground uh, from when we built the house, but this soil was put down 20 odd years ago, but it's all, it's all cracking up, you know. Dog could break his leg down there. So anyway, it is dry. And the golf course is dry because, of course, we've topped all that off as well. So it's a case of do I cut and make that down there, bail it up, and then let the cattle go in and, and finish it off? Or do I strip graze it? And I know I've got enough grazing then for another three or four weeks. So this weather is queer. Yeah, Bramble's still not happy. I'm going to make some phone calls tomorrow. Excuse me. No breakfast. Make some phone calls tomorrow and just see if there's any possibility that he can move to another farm. Uh, that would make me very happy. Anyway, right then, we've got a few jobs to do. <laughs> You've got it on you this morning.
You haven't eaten all your tea. I'm not giving you no more if you're eating your tea. You noticed uh, Mr. Corlock's video this morning with his barbecued uh, game pie and sausages. I obviously mislaid my invitation to that one, you know, Richard. <laughs> I'll get him back for that. Cake. I'm going to eat cake and not invite him. Poor old Bramble. He's not happy. Um, I've had a few uh, messages on Messenger in the last couple of days with reference to uh, my wasping activities. And a common question I'm asked is, do wasps do any good? What's their point? You know, could we live without them? Um, the answer is yes, they do a lot of good. Could we live without them? Possibly, but life, I think, especially in the early part of the summer, would be worse, and farmers would be worse off. So wasps do an awful lot of good for us, for the farmers. Not necessarily for me, but for the arable guys, they do a lot of good. Uh, in the early part of the season, uh, when the queen is busy laying eggs and producing grubs, uh, the wasps, the hive's main job is to care for those grubs. Now, wasp grubs are carnivorous, so they eat meat, which means that the hive is out hunting. So they are actively now hunting, basically, meat, if they can get hold of it. And that is basically flying insects, creepy crawly insects, any insects they can catch. So if you're anywhere near a wasp nest and you just stand quietly and watch, you'll notice lots of the wasps carrying stuff back to the nest. And that can be anything from pretty much a blue bottle fly downwards. I mean, they don't catch a lot of blue bottles because they're a big old fly, but um, wasps will catch, kill, and well, destroy hundreds, millions of aphids and bugs and beetles and you name it, all sorts of stuff that are taken out of our environment every year to feed the grubs. Uh, now at the end of the year or towards the end of the season when the queen's no longer laying her eggs and producing grubs, that's when wasps become a bit of a nuisance because they're basically become unemployed. When they've got no grubs to look after, they're more or less jobless. Um, they've got no purpose as such other than to go out, get drunk on whatever they can find, anything sugar, because they will crave sugar. Um, get drunk, get Larry, pick a fight with whoever they want to pick a fight with, which is quite often us or your dog or whatever else, and then they become a nuisance. So the message here really is, if you've got a wasp nest, if it's right outside your window or your door or something like that, well, yeah, fair enough, there is a risk there, particularly if anybody in the family is susceptible to anaphylactic shock or anything like that, um, you know, highly allergic to wasp stings, then yes, someone like me comes along, and will destroy the nest. If your nest is down the bottom of the garden, it's well out of the way, you've got no pets or kids, enough like that, leave them alone, okay? Because that nest, right up to right, almost to the end of this month, is actually doing quite a lot of good. They're ridding your plants, your roses of aphids, they're ridding your trees of aphids, they're taking um, bugs from the crops. Um, so they're helping, they're doing some good. Maybe after the end of this month, you think about perhaps then, if you want to destroy that nest, then's the time to do it, because that's when uh, they become a nuisance. But remember, if you don't have to destroy that nest, just don't do it. Just leave them alone. Because at the end of the season, that nest is releasing all the queens for next year, for next year's nests. So if we destroy every nest this year, there'll be none next year, and we'll be overridden with all sorts of other flying insects, which are potentially worse than wasps. Hopefully this message is coming across. If you've got a wasp nest, you don't have to kill it. It is not written in law that you must destroy every wasp nest. If you can leave them be, because they're not really interested in you, 
If you can leave them be, leave them be. If they've got the potential of being a real nuisance or hurting somebody, yeah, fair enough. Get somebody to destroy the nest. Uh, but shop around as well. If you're going to get someone to come and destroy your nest, um, it appears to me that there are an awful lot of people are charging an awful lot of money to destroy a nest. I mean, for me to destroy a nest, take away all the training and the kit and everything else, it probably costs me pound in material to destroy that nest. Uh, so if someone's charging you 70 quid, that to me is a rip-off. Um, I charge 40 quid, and if there's more than one nest uh, on the site, I'll do 40 quid for the first nest and every other nest after that, providing they're easy access to get to, it's a fiver, okay? And I earn enough out of that. That's plenty. So for the guys, I just read the thing from the council, uh, 69 pounds from the council to destroy a nest. Any subsequent nests, 21 quid each after that. And if they're called out to a nest and it turns out to be bees, they charge a call-out fee. I know folks have got to earn a living, but um, that's too much. It's too much. Shop around. Just shop around. Anyway, so, but the, the main question is, is yes, wasps do a lot of good. Um, in fact, um, a terrific amount of good. So if you don't have to destroy that nest, leave it be. If you do have to destroy the nest, shop around. Make sure the person you're doing is qualified, knows what they're doing, but shop around. Don't pay through the nose. Okay, so that's that little snippet of stuff that I could add into this video or another one. Or I'll record it again because it's not good enough. We'll see. Anyway, it is 25, 25. 25 minutes past nine. The archers will be here shortly. Once they've gone in and they started setting themselves up, I'm gonna go over and see my parents as I normally do. I'll probably go and walk the corn. Um, and then I'll be back here for lunch. That sounds like an archer. See you there. Okay. Come on. All right, I've just seen father. Apparently they're coming back over to do another moisture test today. Uh, they ran a moisture test on the corn yesterday. Wheat, sorry. Uh, I know some of you get confused over me using the term corn. Corn over here is just a general generalization. So basically it's a cereal crop, is corn to us. Um, but this is wheat, uh, Skyfall. There's actually a bit of rubbish out here. I hadn't been out to this piece, so. It's a bit disappointing seeing all this fat hen out here. Um, the majority of it seems clean. Anyhow, so um, we did a moisture test yesterday, apparently, and it was running at 24%. So those of you that had mentioned it's too green to harvest, you were right. It, it was. Um, so we're assuming today, providing we get no, no wet, it's going to be down to nearer 20. Uh, we want it down, well, below that. We want it sort of... Well, maximum 18, um, preferably lower. So uh, the combine is currently employed on beans, but as I understand, the bean harvest is a bit disappointing. What's that, pigeons? What's that, pigeons? Go on, see them off. What's that, pigeons? Go on, get them, get them. Go on, pigeons. <laughs> I'm going to have to try and get a close-up of that. Um, so yes, yeah, so apparently the bean harvest is disappointing. Uh, as I understand, the plants are no more than sort of 12 to 14 inches high and the pods aren't. Well, there isn't the pods. Rabbits! Rabbits! Uh, so yeah. Uh, if uh, we're on 20% today and it's come down enough, then maybe harvesting Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, downside of that is apparently we've got a fairly heavy stormy weather front that's going to pass pretty close to us tomorrow or Tuesday. It's going to go up the west coast of um, Wales and up through the um, 
towards Ireland. So it sounds like the Welsh and the Irish are going to cop it. But we might get the edge of it, which will put us back again. But anyway, all the heads are bending over now, which apparently on this is a good sign. Bearing in mind, um, I have to remind you that um, this is my first year ever that I've had involvement in growing cereals myself. So if anybody thinks I sound like I know what I'm talking about, I know a bit. And most of the stuff that I tell you is what I've heard that day, day before, or I've just learned it. And bearing in mind, ah, don't you dare. She was just about to have a good roll in that. That's a fox turd, you dirty animal. It's full of maggots too. Ugh. You're getting in my car if you're rolling in that. Uh, anyway, we're going to wander down the pond down there just to see if there's any water in it. Because we have had no rain. I'll keep an eye on her because I don't want her rolling in that turd. Disgusting. <laughs> Rabbits! She's happy. Yes, rabbits, go on. Um, lost my lost my train of thought now. Uh, so yeah, harvest. Looking forward to getting it done and dusted. Hoping that we're going to get it done with the crop dry enough. Hoping that we don't have to dry anything, because obviously if we have to dry the uh, wheat, it's another expense. All comes off the bottom line. Uh, Father was saying that um, he was talking to somebody who's got family up north and there are places up there where they're not even going to bother harvesting it because it's like harvesting rice apparently. The grains, the wheat grains are so small it's not worth the effort. So I don't know. I don't know. I think it's going to be a poor year all round for us. You know what? I'm having that one. <sighs> You're coming out of there and flat on the floor. And you are. Oh, broke him off. Oh, he, oh. Honestly. This is part of our problem here, actually, where I've pulled him up. There is moisture, but it's so far down, and this ground is so hard, where it got capped by that rain after we drilled it. Um, there's no air in the ground, and whatever rain we do get, it gets down deep, but is it going below the roots? Are the roots missing it? Um, as I understand, Skyfall is a bit drought resistant. I learnt that from Harry's farm, from dear old Harry. So any of you that don't subscribe to Harry, now he's a guy who does know about corn. Um, he would put me to shame in seconds, as far as knowledge is concerned. Uh, I'm happy to admit that. So, but I'm also happy to learn. Let's see if I can get up there without oh, flat on my ass. Well, apart from a little tiny green puddle, there's no water in there either. I'm not surprised. Not a bit. This is um, this was a pond we dug out to help with the drainage of the field. Um, the bun that I was standing on. I didn't actually want this. I want this spread out so that in the future, if I want to run a couple of mole plows or mole drains through, I can literally dip the mole in the pond that end and just everything pretty much falls to this corner. So it, it, it lends itself to mole plowing. So yeah, this bun's got to go and then I can literally just drain straight into that corner. Some more ash trees are going. That's gonna be a shame. All right, so 
that's that. Apart from patches of fat hen, it's too late to do much about them now. It doesn't look awful. Right, I'm gonna nick a head off of one of those down there. We'll have a look, see what the grain size is like. And dropped half of that. Well, they, they look pretty small to me. So the sample that I took the head off over the other side was vastly better than that. That is 30, 40% smaller than I'd like it to be. Well, we built a barn that will probably hold a thousand tons. I'll be happy if we get 150 in there. Rabbits! Some of these stalks do still have some green on them. Straw needs to be dry too. Like she needs encouraging. Rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. That's it, I'm done. <laughs> Come on! Psst. Well, judging by the commotion just now, I think our green woodpeckers have fledged out that nest because a whole clatter of them have just flown out of there that way, making a right racket. So, uh, we've got a bit of work to do on that tree. Uh, basically, where it's collapsed in the past, I know to bring him back down and reshape that one. So. When we've got nothing else to do, the tree guys are not busy and I can get to it. We're probably going to take the head off of this tree uh, and just bring him back down to kind of an own natural pollard. Because while he's like this and the wind's catching that, it can put a twisting force on the tree, which can cause few, well, more, just more failure. So if we can even up the wind load on the tree over the whole crown, hopefully he'll outlast me. I think Reg has been here with a map bro. I think this is uh, an exercise of making the gap big enough for the combine. God, look at all that fat hen. Well, I like to see <laughs> clean corn, but I got a funny feeling the <laughs> very wet beginning of the year followed by the extremely dry second half of the year has not suited the corn that well, but the fat hen is thriving on it. Squirrels, 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 where's the squirrels, squirrels, 
Squirrels. It wasn't really a squirrel, but you know, makes her happy. Right, half past 11, time to go home. Ooh. Okay, so I've just spotted a fungal bracket on that chestnut, so we'll go and see what that is. Looks like a dryad saddle from here. Uh, and it looks like a dryad saddle from here too. Uh, Polyporus squamosus. Um, apparently when they're young they are edible. I just never fancied it much myself. But I don't know if you can see, but literally about 18 inches above those brackets on the left hand side there's a hole. That's where Mrs. Woodpecker raised her family. Um, that piece of dead stick there will be staying there. We won't take that out because the habitat value for that, not just for the woodpeckers now, but um, bats will use that for a day roost as well now the woodpeckers are gone. Hmm. I'm quite interested to get up there and have a look at that. But not today. Size up. It smells like chicken guts. Or poultry guts, anyway. Whew. It's coming from the motorway. Well, motorway direction, not the motorway, but from that way, someone's spreading some chicken shit. Whew. That'll put arrows in your chest. Come here. There you go. I reckon someone has stopped here to empty their bladder. You bugger off and mark your own territory and leave mine alone. So, sadly I've already been, otherwise I'd have to do what the dog does and do mine on top of that, just to say, you know, piss off, mine. Right then, hopefully I only get a phone call later on and let us know what the result is of uh, today's moisture test. I can't join the guys because they're doing it at half past 12, at which time I'll be sitting down to my Sunday lunch. Right, I'll see you later. You bought a troublemaker, have you? Here's to the new member of the family. No, my Hello, Meg. Yes, but she obviously recognises a person of authority. She offside. <laughs> obviously, obviously recognises who oh, should be in charge. Sweet Jesus, dog, you're too big to be a lamb. Eh? Oh, look at you. Yeah, Dad, look what I've got to deal with. Oh, <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you, I'll swap you that big one no. for the little one. No. Okay, do you want to introduce your pup? A Meg has come. A Meg is. Twat. <laughs> All right. So who and what is Meg? Meg is a ha ha bony shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> is she? I never heard of one of those. She is a collie. Border collie. I don't know if she's quite border collie. She's no. Got two different, two different looking parents. Oh okay. Small, um, long haired collie for a mum. Bitch. And then a big, smooth head, red dad. Oh, red. But red, because red is only in his line, yeah. and there's no red in the mum's side, Yeah. she came out black. Okay. And these two kind of started play, which is nice, because Flossie does not want to play. Oh, does she not? Yeah, but Flossie, G Gypsy likes puppies anyway, doesn't Flossie she? Flossie is having you a like puppies, tantrum you? at the yeah, moment. Oh, is she? She's not happy. No. Oh, dear. But... It's one of those things where she didn't like biscuit or, or crumble when they first started, and I have photo evidence of her playing with both of them. Yeah. Wait, so. She's found that the taste of bird shit is lovely. Any any puppies and poo 
And it's something like they just want to catch worms? Oh, a big thing of pigeons went over the house earlier. She went and hid under the table. Oh, did she? She's a brave pup then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you keep, you've smacked me twice in the head now. She's gone off on a mission now. Oh, she likes the cockerel, but I, I packed that in straight away. Yeah, we don't want to encourage that kind no. of behaviour. No. I mean, she she will go and investigate and Leg. range step up. But uh, chicken chasing is not on the cards. Oh, she's found a feather. Fence she's feathers. very much like biscuit when it comes to feathers. Is it? Yeah, oh, she loves Biscuits it. Biscuits disappear, but then I suppose, I dare say mother's carving the meat Biscuit for Sunday lunch. Biscuit is being a pretty princess thinking, going, no, I am the most beautiful thing at this farm, thank you. She, she, she looks down at Which her like she a is, peasant. of course. No, she's not. Yeah. Well, at least you've got a real Yay! dog now. It's not just a, not just a pikey dog. Where is the pikey dog, anyway? Pikey dog um, saw that Henry was leaving and me and Poppy were not leaving. Well, Poppy was not going with Henry, so she went, I'm going with him! <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. So, so Floss's nose is right out of joint then. Yeah, and she went and apparently Henry's dad offered her a biscuit earlier and she didn't take it, so she's having a bit of tea. All right, okay. But Henry got the lead down and she was like, so she's gone with Oh, she, there you are. She's developing her bark. <laughs> she's a bit of a howler, actually. No one can see that. She's just picked up a bit of tree bark over there. She's a bit of a howler. Meg! Bring the bark! Meg! Yeah, look, Mummy, I've got a bark! All the way! Meg! I've dropped my bark. Coming! Good girl! Yes. Good says, girl! She says, I'm going to go to the important one, which is him. Hello, you. Thing is, if, if was the owner a, a bloke, wasn't he? So she's probably used to a man's voice. No, because he's got little kids. Oh, was he? And the two little girls. And so they used to hurt. Hello, you're going to come on my lap, are you? Yes, we love you too. If I sit on the floor, this is what she does. Sit on your lap. It's not a lap dog. You'll you'll rue the day. I know. If you turn it into a lap dog. Muppet's proven that point quite. Yeah. Nice. Right, I'm going to go and see what my dinner's doing. Excuse I'm me. I'm going to go and see my nanners. I just thought I'd bring her down and see if she would play and stuff without Floss being here. And she did. Thank yeah. you very much, Gypsy. Yeah. Well, Gypsy's a playful dog anyway, so. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm going for my pork. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And obviously I came down to see everyone on their birthday as well. Yeah, and me. It's not birthday. But you couldn't see me anyway. Because you miss me so much. Bite your foot. Bite your foot. Yeah, right, okay. I love you too. Yeah. That's it. All done. Archers have finished with it for a month. You can go back out. So, uh, I guess it's me who's clearing up the last of the party. Detroiters from uh, yesterday's little uh, shenanigans. Hmm. So, does it make my voice a bit... <laughs> Helium. <laughs> I've got another one. Don't know if I can do this one-handed. Um, it's not that squeaky though, is it? Honestly, it's a it's a bit squeaky, but it's not really squeaky. I don't know, there we go. I bet that. No, nope. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit silly though, isn't it? So, yeah, and it doesn't last very long. I don't know if it tastes very nice, it's uh, I've probably got half of the, the main contents of the balloon material as well. Anyway, don't try this at home kids, it's a very stupid thing to do. Take it from me.